Mi papá era gallero, como Macarena. Still is in his heart. But back in the day, starting way back, when him and his brother roamed the streets of La Boquilla, very poor colonia in Monterrey, Mexico, with Rooster under arms, looking for a fight, and watching Rooster kick it near its image, a threat, a crash, brilliant feathers reflected in mirrors, scattered on the floor, and my grandmother would yell at her two oldest sons. Time went on, of course, as it does, and eventually my father was the guy who had all that he had wanted, all the roosters, etc., that you could ever imagine. And he would be a cockfighter until it was only the artifacts that were left. What we're looking at here is pretty much the last of the artifacts. We have here the modern cocker number two. Very interesting uh, book devoted to nothing but cockfighting. And uh, it's uh, for the experienced cocker by Roy String King Bingham. I think this thing is probably a collector's item at this point. And this is the dedication here. It says it's dedicated to the late editor of Grit and Steel, Ruth DeCamp McMillan. Uh, forever she will live in the hearts and memories of all who know her. So that woman was the editor of uh, Grit and Steel. I don't know. Anyways, this thing is, I'm not sure how old this is, but I know that it has been around a long time, as long as I can remember. Of course, it's um, got all sorts of interesting stuff in it here. A little boy, it's somewhere in a Texas pit, it says here. It runs a Texas pit somewhere. Back when pit cockfighting was actually legal, if you can imagine that. Uh, got some babes, of course. Uh, these are circulation helpers for Gamecock, Feathered Warrior, and Grit and Steel. Imagine that, and here's, here they are again. Here they are without journals. Here they are. It's hard to tell, of course. With journals. Not very good quality of photograph. Of course, this is really old. Anyways, this is one of the artifacts I still have left here. My father gave me all this stuff. Uh, so anyway, so that's one little artifact here of uh, fighting way back in the day. This stuff here, I began with the poem there, a little bit of a poem. And this is some sort of some medicine here from Mexico, and it's called Dio Viroton y Vitamex. And it says, Para gallos de pelea garantizados por laboratoria Avimex SA. So it's some sort of vitamin for, you know, this is like some sort of promotional ashtray or you can use this to feed baby chicks, I guess. Uh, this is um, you know, just promotional thing, propaganda. And then here we have. I'm sure if you've ever seen fighting roosters, you understand this. This is a leg tie. Here you have the part that you run put a stake here, like a tent stake almost, or whatever, into the ground. And then here, this goes on the rooster's foot. This is, um, of course, you know, leather. And you, what you do is you put it on whichever foot you please. And this way the roosters can't get free. Otherwise, you know, you'd have a terrible situation if you have a lot of these. And there was a point where my father had, you know, probably about a hundred gamecocks, and we had other uh, types of birds too, pheasants and uh, bantams and all sorts of things, ducks. Anyways, but this here is kind of an interesting thing. So, <laughs> you know, it's a leg tie, keep them from fighting, turning everything into a bloody mess, basically. Are we looking here? What else do we have? We have what are essentially <laughs> boxing gloves. These are used, uh, of course, where the spur would be. Uh, this would be put on the rooster's feet. Well, I have I have a set. So you can see, I actually have two sets. I have two sets of boxing gloves. You can imagine that. These are again. These are rather unique things too. Um, I mean, these are, you have different styles here to adjust them, as you can tell. You have this 
basically a piece of. And you pull that, and you'll be able to open this up, put this on the roosters. It's got room there for the uh, <coughs> for the spur of the rooster. I can get it open, of course. Uh, so this is a little box number. You put that on them, and then of course you would simply put this back over. The weld, so to speak. So I got the camera work there. And there you have it. It would be on there and it would be for the roosters to basically uh, practice. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of a unique thing, too. Very interesting. All this stuff is very interesting because this is part, this is all, these are, again, these are artifacts from a culture that has been pretty much, uh, at least in the United States, been deemed illegal. And of course, in most countries, so these so called blood sports. Uh, are considered to be very profane things. And <coughs> we come now, here's something interesting. This is actually used to cut the spur. That's what this was actually for. This was used to cut the spur of the rooster. You would cut the spur, actually, because you'd be mounting something on the, uh, in that area, or you'd be using these little glove things, and you can't have the spur being you know, tremendously huge. So you would use this little saw here to trim that off. Another part of the paraphernalia here is actually <coughs> the scissors that are used to trim the, um, I guess you call it, the crown of the rooster. They have a term for that, which I don't remember right now, but they basically cut off the top crown crest and the waddles underneath the chin. And the reason they do that, of course, is because in a um, fight, those would be considerably uh, vulnerable, you know, very big liability for the creature. So anyway, this is some of the stuff here that we have. Finally, I get to some of the other interesting stuff. And we have, and I believe these are Filipino. That is a knife. That is a big, mean, razor sharp. Uh, it could be a Mexican, too. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, I think the Filipino ones are actually larger than this. I think this is a Mexican type. This is like basically a knife, Mexican knife. I'll look it up. Uh, I'll, put a, I'll see if I can find some more information about it. I used another term I can't remember, but here it is. Look at that. That is wicked. And this is actually put onto the foot of the rooster. Usually one, if I'm not mistaken. Sometimes two, probably. Who knows? And this, they use this to wrap it and put it on there. It's like a thick, um, almost like bandage. You wrap it on there. Some sort of a gauzy stuff. And I also have a smaller, smaller one which is just as deadly looking as far as I'm concerned. You have this, again, these things are razor sharp. I don't even want to touch its point, you know, so. These are artifacts of the dead culture, at least in this country. And finally, I have one more of these. And again, I'm not sure if this is Filipino or I think it's Mexican. And it's really neat. It has a little sheath you can actually unsheath it. And it's as big as, well, it's a little smaller. It's as big as this one. Actually, they're all different sizes if you look carefully. You'll see that they are three different sizes of these slashing razors, essentially, is what these are. Uh, you know, again, I'm not condoning this sport. It was part of my childhood. I grew up with these things, you know, and I'm going to talk about that in the next poem I'm going to do here in a minute. But this is a three-part video, something I haven't done in a while, let's make a video. So these are some really vicious looking things here, you know. Um, again, I'm not condoning the sport. I think that it's uh, very interesting, though. And uh, again, something that I was raised around made an impact on me. So this is kind of just a weird little collection of things that uh, was kind of passed down to me. Uh, my father really gave me this stuff. Uh, he didn't have any need for it any longer. And so he basically said, well, you know, uh, you can do whatever you want with it. Add it to your weird collections of stuff. <laughs> you know, so you have essentially, uh, you have the paraphernalia here uh, for cockfighting. And I really like the sheep a lot. I'll do that again. The sheep is really neat. Let me see the knife here. You have the knife. Yeah, I'm choosing the smallest now so it'll fit more of the blade. Though I think it's actually made for, you know, watch out there, that'll cut the heck out of you. 
We have, I think it's actually made for this one right here. And there you have a sheath. I mean, neat. People are strange, no? It's pretty vicious looking. Yeah, but that's what it is. And so you have that. A little, I have this little sheath here. And so there you have that. And I have the tie for the rooster. And at one point, I used to have um, about 15 years worth of cockfighting magazines. I went and sold all those, though, to a collector. I didn't get much money for them, actually. But, you know, I couldn't carry them around. It was too much stuff. So I thought I would share this with everyone out there. And, and something to remember. Something maybe to someone that's culturally significant. I don't know. Tools of the trade of cockfighting. Chickens and some birds from my life. I cried when my great aunt took my chicken away, the one that they had just given me. And it was red and I had held her in my arms and I had loved that chicken for just that brief amount of time that they'd let me keep her. And then they twisted her neck and then they ate her. I killed a couple of chickens a couple of times when I was about five. I thought it was kind of neat the way the chickens had stopped moving after I twisted their neck. And my papa, he'd get really excited when he found the corpses thinking some chicken-killing creature was on the loose. I guess I was. And I only did it a couple of times, I guess until I learned whatever it was I needed to learn. Finally, there was this little black hen who I threw over the fence, and she plopped into the dust. Still, she was the last. Around that same time, when we were still living in Arizona, my dad caught a roadrunner, which he put in a cage, where it proceeded to begin to beat itself bloody against the chicken wire that kept it away from running along the road. And my papa took it out of the cage, realizing that it was silly to keep something called a roadrunner in a cage, encased in chicken wire. So we put Vaseline on its wounds and set it free. And then there was a time when there was something killing the gamecocks that we had, all our roosters. And it would lead them to rot, still attached to the uh, leg string. And I'd come home from school and find them there. And then one day I came home and I found another murdered rooster by his teepee. And on a fence post, overlooking the scene, was a golden eagle, wondering why it couldn't get the rooster into the air. And I ran and I told my papa, who grabbed his twenty-two Winchester rifle, and I could see he was mad about the deaths, but he couldn't shoot the eagle. I think he saw that was just how things were. The eagle could do no more to resist its urge to kill than the roosters could deny their urge to fight. And that's why they had to be on those strings, so that the backyard didn't turn into a battle royal. We lived out in West Texas, and me papa fought his roosters in pits with other roosters owned by other men, and he fought this black beauty that he had given as much love as the rest, and he thought was a real fighter. It lost. When my dad came home late that night, I ran out to meet him as he threw the corpse into the burning barrel. He lit one of his Swisher Sweet cigars he was smoking at the time as a replacement for the Marlboros that he'd given up, and his face was lined in shadowing flame, watching the cock's body catch on fire on the top of the refuse in the barrel and his cigar winked under the western sky, and he stopped fighting roosters and just raised and traded them after that. I stopped eating chicken in 1990, saw a horrible film called Faces of Death, which showed the degrading demise of the chickens people bought packaged in pla plastic at the store. I was disgusted, remembering how my uncle and my father would do it, and I didn't, didn't eat chicken again until 2000, maybe because I lost my revulsion as I became older and more jaded. It's not like I don't care, it's just with so many cares, one gets hungry. And me? Well, I was born in the year of the cock, 1969, all seeming to be a metaphor for my Scorpio desires, sign ruled by sex and death, something the roosters in my life are very familiar with. And I read this book when I was 18. I found it in a library on board the USS New Jersey, where I was stationed, PV-62, the ship's library. Imagine that. And that book was Be Here Now, and there was the story about this monk who's told by his master to take a chicken somewhere where no one can see it and kill it. The monk left, came back to the master later, and said he couldn't kill the chicken. The master asked why, and the monk replied that no matter where he went, the chicken was watching. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and now my son wants chickens. Oh, he's sleeping on.
Um, they're sleeping with you today? Yeah, they're sleeping on me. They think I'm their mother. They think that you're their mother? Yeah. Oh, Which is okay. kind of fun. Let me see. All right, cool. And our other chickens are over there. Oh. Ah, chickens are nice, aren't they?